This conversation was sponsored by BitSquare, a Tor-based, anonymous, and decentralized Bitcoin exchange. Learn more at bitsquare.io. Vlad Samfir on blockchain governance, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. Um, Artchain, Casper, his work with, uh, his collaboration with Cinero, and much more. Hello everybody, I am Juan Galt with Olympics, and I had the opportunity to meet up with uh, Vlad Samfir. He's one of the lead researchers of Ethereum, and uh, he's working on Casper right now, the next proof-of-stake protocol for Ethereum. And uh, we met up at a Vancouver uh, Cinero uh, governance uh, conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, we had a great time, I mean, just in general, in the conference, and, and had some really good conversations. And uh, I managed to get a, a pretty good interview with him, so, you know, here it is. And uh, the lighting was a little bit off, so... I had to pull some editorial magic, but um, enjoy. So at the conference in Cineros, uh governance conference, we had a, a pretty good conversation about what is governance, how we should think about it, what is, you know, like it's a, it's a really weird concept, you know? What do you think, what did you get out of that? Like, what, what do you think about that conversation that we had? And what, what do you think governance means, basically? Sure, so... Um, I think governance basically is about a um, set of people managing a shared resource. Basically, they have to come to decisions basically using inputs from uh, from members of this governing group in order to make decisions on the governed thing. Um, and, you know, the scenario of governance conference was interesting because we talked about, you know, uh, the kinds of things that lead to the coordination that might be useful for governance in terms of, you know, like emergent behaviors and coordination, uh, you know, active coordination as opposed to coordination that happens kind of spontaneously because people have the same information. Um, and I think it was interesting because, like, you know, Scenario has, like, some concrete things that they need to govern and uh, as a community needs to kind of have, like, establish some kind of, you know, uh, set of norms because basically what we're, we're we're discovering in the blockchain space is that like governance is super important so so that the software doesn't kind of stay uh static and so that development can be you know funded and governed and so that like hard forks can happen without um you know without putting the system in crisis um so governance is like you know necessary for blockchains and like you know i think it's clear clearer and clearer to everyone in the space that, that every like blockchain community should have some kind of governance model or plan or kind of set of principles that kind of they agree uh, their software will kind of hold by and, and you know have like public discussion about um, you know why they made the choices that they made so yeah I thought it was an interesting conference I think uh, governance is an important question Um, I have a few preferred like principles that I like to have. Like, I like governance systems to to hold. Um, I kind of like for clients to be represented by the governance system. I think like you know the users of the protocol are really the the the, the people who need to be served. Um, and so any governance solution that you know doesn't doesn't have some way to prove that the users will have their kind of rights and values preserved. Um, you know, or, 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 you know, they're just like treated well by the protocol changes that the governance system, uh, you know, executes. Um, I think it's like not one that I would, that I would be happy to support. I'm not into like, you know, governance for the sake of coin holders or miners. I really think that like, uh, users must be, you know, kind of the most important. Um, I think, uh, you know, having an understanding of like, like if the more of that a community can have a shared understanding of what their values are, and for what purpose they are optimizing or like controlling the protocol, um, I think that would be really helpful because like you know if we know what we want, then it's easier for us to agree on whether or not a fork is what we want. Um, so, 
and, and I think you know, I think I, I, I think contentious hard forks are actually not as bad as people as people think. I think I think I think a lot of the times it's better to have uh, governance occur and um, rather than to be stuck because like if a community is big enough or the time to come to a decision is short enough, then it's going to be hard to you know if the hard fork or requires discussion. Uh, for everyone to agree on like whether or not to do it, uh, and I think it's like a good, it's like a, it's like it's like you know, the cost of the cost of the split in network effect, um, and the benefit is that like it's kind of a win-win situation where different clients get the result that they wanted, and like you know, like I said earlier, I think really clients need to be you know at the top of the food chain. If different clients want different rules, if different clients, you know, think they benefit from different social contracts, they should go and like, you know, use those particular blockchains. Um, do you see any trends of thought in the Ethereum about how to solve governance problems? Um, I, I, I think, you know, I think people are st still not really in agreement, or you know, I, I don't see any clear like consensus forming around any particular governance model. Uh, people have varying degrees to which they want it to be institutionalized. Uh, I think just about everyone wants some kind of more certainty about what the governance model would be. Um, but no one is really prepared to give a governance model that they're ready to like run with. Um, and I think that's fine because I think governance is a genuinely really hard problem. Um, you know, and for Ethereum, I don't think the network effects are actually that great in the sense that, like, um, you know, if your DAP is on Ethereum or Ori Classic, like, it's probably okay. You know, I don't know, like, unless, like, proof of work is always a sketchy thing. But, uh, it's like, you know, in theory, um, having multiple blockchains is totally cool for different clients, right? Thank you for watching. Uh, there's other, there's two or three other pieces of this interview that uh, you might be interested in. They're right here. And uh, if you're interested in buying some Ethereum or trading some Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin, you name it, and the top cryptocurrencies, you can best do it at uh, Bitsquare.io. It's a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange, Tor-based, anonymous, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good platform. So uh, check that out. It's definitely one of the best ways to buy cryptocurrencies and trade them. And... Um, you have an awesome day.